Hello, it's Fiona Hooper here again and back for another weekly instalment of the Poetry of Painting. Slightly frazzled this week because both myself and my guest um, had rather short time frames for getting on this week. But uh, oh, and my guest has disappeared off the feed. Hopefully she'll be back in just a few minutes. Um, anyway, after last week's heat wave, back to wearing something else. Um, a little bit warmer and it's blustery and rather wet weather here so far this week so uh, the heat just seems like a long time ago now already but um hey ho never mind so let me see no nope. unfortunately my guest is still not quite ready to join us so she's having a few issues there um hopefully she'll be with us in a minute anyway so what i might oh no she's back hi so there is my guest and my guest this week is the lovely poet yvonne ugarty so um welcome yvonne we should thank hope you. to hear you yes we can hear you yes yeah, thank you <laughs> these techie things are just sent to try us that's all <laughs> so. anyway how how are you yvonne how are things I'm going I'm very well, thank you. Yes, the good, sun's come out good. now after all that rain. Yeah, it, it don't know about where you are, but it absolutely hammered down here this afternoon, and yeah, it thought did, I was yeah. going to get soaked, but luckily I didn't, <laughs> so that was good news. Um, so we'll we'll get on with the poems to start with and have a chat afterwards, and I'm going to put the painting up on the screen for people to see, and um, I'm dying to hear your poem in a minute. It's a uh, like my poem, it's about my painting that I've just put up, which is called New Beginnings, um, which is actually an oil painting on gold leaf on canvas. Um, it's 40 by 40 centimetres. And I just love the the way that the gold leaf reflects the light and, and the painting seems to change with changing light conditions. It can look like, you know, early morning all the way through the day to the evening. Um, and this particular one in low light, what seems to happen is that the trees seem to become silhouetted as though it, you're looking out, you know, over the crest of a hill towards, um, you know, the dying sun, sunset and, and the trees are just silhouetted in front of it. So it's really quite magical. So I'm quite hooked on gold leaf at the moment. So <laughs> anyway, um, Yvonne, would you would you like to read your poem for us, please? I would. Actually, when I looked at yours, uh, apart from it being beautiful, I'm an I'm a environmental poet, mainly. That's what people know me as. And uh, I was just thinking about the beauty of, the, I mean, I love trees. I'm a bit of a dendrophile, I have to be said. Um, and I was looking at the trees and I was thinking about our planet. And so mine mm. is about the planet and the trees, if that's okay. It's more than okay. That's brilliant. I mean, I I love trees as well. Love walking through a forest and oh, woods, yes. you know, in amongst the trees and the it's the the sounds and the smells as well. You know, the the leaves on the floor and everything. And um, I I don't know if you've seen some of my other shows, I but I am have, rather yeah. concerned about the planet as well and what we're doing to it. So very happy for you to do something about the planet. So I will be quiet and allow you to read your poem. Well, this, I call this one Crisis Point. Our planet is in crisis and we humans are to blame. No thoughts about tomorrow without a sense of shame. We trample fragile flowers and chop down countless trees. We're lawless and we're thoughtless. We do what the hell we please. Orangutans in Borneo, a few trees left to climb. We're not concerned with how they'll live. We haven't got the time. And those ocean-dwelling turtles being strangled every day by the plastic rings round beer, beer cans sorry, that we casually throw away. Our coral reef is dying from the toxins in the sea. Entire species endangered, and that's down to you and me. Our ecosystem struggling, and to humankind it's linked. Mammals, birds and butterflies, some are now extinct. Thinking of the rainforests from Borneo to the UK, an area the size of Paris is demolished every day. The trees mm -hmm. supply the oxygen, which gives us air to breathe. So in felling them, you're killing us. Why are we so naive? 
Plastics, along with oil spills, will our race just never learn? Well, if we don't act now, it'll be too late and polluted tides will turn. Thank you. Wow. That is that is absolutely brilliant. I love it. It's, and it says so much about what people need to be thinking about now and taking action to, yeah. to I don't know if we can reverse these changes, but at least to stop anything getting any worse. It's just... Mm. Yeah, and some of the programs that I've seen on television about it is it is so frightening and scary and so damning of the human race as well, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, maybe some people wouldn't agree, but we, we are just ruining this planet. And, you know, I just fear for generations to come, what what's it going to be like for them? Will, will they survive, you know, with the, what we're doing to the planet at the moment? So... It's, well, the, yeah. the northern the northern white rhino is extinct now. Is gone. Yes, so yes. That is. Oh, I, I can't tell you. That is just absolutely horrendous. And it's down to us. If it was like a natural thing that you know, but it's not. It's us who've done that. Absolutely. We can't it's get it like, back. You know. Yeah, it's not like the extinction of the dinosaurs, which was due to a, a huge meteor or whatever. No, you know, exactly. it's you know, we couldn't have done anything about that if we'd have been around at the time. This is this is something that we are causing, though, and that we can do something about. And yeah, anything we can do to spread the word is is good. So thank you very much. That's a beautiful yeah, poem. You. And thank so you. My, mine's um, rather different. Um, I concentrated on the, the trees themselves and and um, sort of trees growing up. So um, it's a bit lighter than yours. Uh, which makes me feel mine's, you know, not quite as important as yours in that respect, because to me, you know, climate change and what we're doing to the planet is so important. So, um, yeah. but anyway, this is my one and it is called New Beginnings, like painting. So here we go. So, Moving through the forest on a soft carpet of leaves under the filigree canopy of dense woven twigs, a small clearing is found where sunbeams reach down. And there at the back, at the side of the track, a sapling quite small, not yet five feet tall. With but a few years of growing, bark smooth and grey, it was born of the mast that tumbled from up high, that small shiny nut in its prickly armour sprouting, reaching down in the earth and up to the sky, the tiniest tree in the forest is now over knee high. In the shadow of giants, trees many decades its senior, sheltered from the storms and blistering heat, with each new branch it reaches ever upwards, seeking the warmth and the light of a life-giving sun, ascending from the shade where its life was begun. Like a child, it is innocent of the ways of the woods, with its fresh young leaves in serrated lime green, where the moth lays her eggs underneath unseen, a ready-made larder for her annual brood, waiting to hatch for fresh and still growing food. The beech is the queen of our British trees and our sapling merely a princess in waiting. It will be many years yet till she can take her crown when her branches mingle with those of her peers and her own beech mast will go tumbling down. So let's Absolutely. hope our little princess in waiting gets the chance to grow up and be one of the queens of the British trees where the, the oak is supposedly the king of British trees and, and the beech is the queen. So, so mine was a, a very different take on it from yours, but- um, It was lovely. I, I mean, I, I, could, I could hear, um, that passion in your voice as well, which is amazing about the trees. Yeah, I, I do. I do love trees. They, you know, they just there's something about them. They're so sort of solid and and dependable, um, you know, and, and they they do such good for the planet as well. You know, as you say, they they produce so much oxygen, taking carbon dioxide. Mm. Um, the you know the leaf patterns, the patterns of the twigs and branches make. Um, what are known as fractals, which I think I've mentioned this in a show before, but it, it's been scientifically proven that looking at fractals and that uh, is actually 
very um, de-stressing for people. You know, the, the natural patterns, repeating patterns of the leaves yeah. and the twigs and, and even the patterns on the bark. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways in which they're really good for us. You know, they, with more trees, they soak up more rainwater, help to prevent flooding, the same as gardens do if they're not paved over. You know, a lot of flooding in areas is, is caused mm -hmm. because we don't have uh, places where the rain can soak in as much anymore. So, That's true. yeah, it's again, what we're, what we're doing to the planet. So, um, but I think we have to be positive and, and try and take every small step that we can to help and, like and encourage others, you know, like, you know, cutting down on plastic wherever we can and planting more trees, campaigning for, you know, natural spaces to be, you know left as natural and not be built on and i know you know they say keep saying we need more houses but you know there's this no. precious little countryside being left at this rate which is i find really rather scary so i do as well what was really yeah. nice for me at christmas is um my uh, stepdaughter bought me um a plaque and it said uh, Yvonne Ugarty, one tree will be planted and it showed me where this wood is in the Yorkshire yeah. Dales and it is so exciting so when this oh. pandemic's over we're all gonna go and see where this tree is yes. I am so giddy that was oh, like one of the best presents honestly that's one brilliant. tree yeah yes yes and there's another thing what was it something recently that I I was buying and you could have there was one option but you could pay just a little bit more and they were going to plant a tree if you just paid that little bit extra so yeah I, I just can't think what it was now that I'd ordered but they you know I just thought what a great idea you know it's somebody wonderful. will be organizing it and doing it and you know it makes it easy for people to get involved and and to help which I think is just such a brilliant idea there is so, um there is some some people, and I can't remember which country they're from now. My, my brain's gone to mush. Um, but what they do is when that person passes away, they plant mm. a seed in the tummy and the seed grows oh. into a tree. And I think that is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. That's Feeding brilliant. the tree. Uh, yeah. That's excellent. Like I think woodland burials. I mean, yes. what, what would, you know, a great place to, to bury someone so that it benefits the forest and, you know, returns the nutrients to soil and yeah yeah i excellent. think it's fabulous that yeah yes yeah so gosh we're a bit deep on this one today aren't we <laughs> <laughs> but it is important and i think you know i'm not i'm not scared of saying it i really no, do think it's so important so i do yeah many years yeah. ago i um wrote, I wrote a poem about david attenborough and what a impact it's had on my life over all these years. I was brought up in mm -hmm. care, uh, and my foster father, luckily, was also into nature and David Attenborough. So every week in the black and whites, going back a few years, yeah. it, David Attenborough was in my room, you know, he was, he was in the room yeah. every week, and he mm -hmm. took me to all these amazing places. Um, and I see all these insects and birds and trees and flowers and he's always been there. Whatever else has happened, whatever crap's mm -hmm. happened in my life, David Attenborough's has always been there somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I wrote this poem. I must have been about uh, 20, 19, 20 maybe. And mm -hmm. um, I recently sent him it and said what an impact you've mm -hmm. had on my life. I wanted to share this to you. And I got a personalised letter back, written oh. handwritten. Oh, my it gosh. Was, oh, I can't tell you. And it's a dear Yvonne Ugarty. Thank you so much for that lovely poem. I am, I am indeed honoured. And it went on. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, and he sent me a signed photograph. I can't, that was another one of those wow moments right. that I'll never, ever forget as long as I live. Yeah. Never. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you put that in a frame on the wall. I think oh. I might. <laughs> I'll send you it later. I'll show you. Yes. Oh, it'd be lovely. Thank you. Oh, what a, yeah. what a magical thing. Yeah, yeah. Somebody so fantastic and who's done so much to, yeah. to help this planet. Oh, wow. Me, absolutely amazing. Love that. But and, I think um, got, so, sorry. Yeah. And then I was going to say, and then two summers ago before lockdown, I was asked to perform at Millennium Square in Leeds at the climate change rally. And so mm. I was like in front of like 300 people on the stage. And it was just Gosh. like, wow. And I was, I was, I did one of my environmental poems to 
to all these like young people. There were students, there were teachers, mm. there were, and it was that was another one of those moments. It was like if yeah. only three people out of that crowd actually got what I was saying, my job's mm. done. Yeah, you know I mean, because yeah. they're the I, ones who can change the world. They're yeah. the ones. Do you know what I mean? Especially if we can get the younger ones, you know, because they've got so much more time ahead of them to to do something and also to make changes now and live yeah. a life that will help rather than yeah so oh brilliant yeah. that's amazing yeah. So, yeah but i think you've got something else to tell us about as well i think something that's in in process at the moment and uh, how very exciting it should have come this week i'm waiting for it to come with bated breath i'm waiting for the yeah. email or whatever to say your books have arrived um, this week they're coming and it's um, a children's book. It's full of poems that I've written over the last 50 years. And it's illustrated by children at the school that I work in. Uh, and all proceeds from it are going to Martin House Hospice, which is a children's hospice where my little boy was. And so it's like a win-win situation. So it's like, yeah. I'm so excited. And that's a picture of it. It's called My Aunt Jean's a Dinosaur. Yeah, I had to show them because I just love the illustrations on it. They're just absolutely amazing. And there's yes. another one as well. Let me let me share the other one for a moment as well, because that is just I love the pictures in it. So it just takes a moment to pull up the no other problem. one. But look at that. Look at those yeah. lions. I mean, just aren't they just fabulous? So that's the lion who lost his raw. That's that one is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but I just the illustrations. You know, they're just there's something so innocent about them, and and just just drawn. You know, not trying to be exact and and realistic, but just just their impressions and their feelings about the the animals and things. I think, and the dinosaur on the cover is just wonderful. So yeah, that was uh, Kathleen Strafford, who's the. Um, She's the publisher. It was her daughter who did the uh, illustration for the dinosaur on the front, and she just captured mm. Aunt Jean, as I imagine Aunt Jean. That's what she looks yeah. like. <laughs> if you've got an Aunt Jean mm. out there, I do apologise. <laughs> well, my mum's a Jean, so she's an aunt. Oh, my don't tell her. Yes. No, I won't tell her. Not much. That she's a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> no, dear mum. So no, I think that's absolutely beautiful and. And I think um, you were telling me about the proceeds of the book as well before. Yes, that's going to Martin House Children's Hospice, uh, where my little boy was. And they were so amazing. It was just like invisible hands supporting mm -hmm. us as a family uh, when my little boy passed away. So it was just incredible. So I've been doing loads of fundraising over the years. But mm. this was just like, oh, yes, because he loved yeah. creepy crawlers. And in the book, I don't um, know if it's on that page, there's like a lady bird. She's got about 5,000 legs, but it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And it's like oh, all the creepy right. crawlers in is just like what my little boy Emil would have loved that. So it's yeah. like it, he was the inspiration behind it. Yeah. Lovely. Well, you know, when you've got the link for it, do please put it in the links in the comments on Facebook afterwards. I will definitely. So that you know that people will be able to check it out and buy a copy and you know be supporting that great cause as well so that'd be lovely so yeah that's great yeah. i mean it's only it's only 10 pound and it's a signed copy um and the children are just so excited who are in it and the ones that weren't because mm -hmm. what happened was i did a competition throughout school and at all mm -hmm. the characters in the poem so i've got like a ballerina um i've got a lion i've, I've got crow i've got all sorts of different creatures and people yeah. and i give a list to each class and so the children who wanted to enter the competition drew something they all went to the editor so that i wasn't biased because i'd be wanting everybody you have to be honest Absolutely. and she she selected the ones to go in but the ones who weren't going in the book are going in a huge floor book at school so they're still gonna have their their work represented which is fabulous Good, good. Oh, that's such lovely. Such a lovely story and a, a wonderful thing to do as well. And, yeah. You know, so helping such a good cause in the process too. So do. Yeah, do put the links in afterwards and uh, any other links that you've got, you know, to your, you know, your um, Facebook and everything else as well. So that people can well, look you up and check, your, check out your poetry and everything. So that'd be lovely. So we got any other poetry events coming up, Yvonne? 
Um, yeah, I'm on quite a lot of Zoom. Um, I'm quite a lot of Zoom calls that I go on. I'm, I also run my own writing group. I started doing that during lockdown mm. for people. So it was just like at the beginning, I think people had all these things to say, but they didn't have to say them. So sometimes it's just mm. a word, sometimes it's a sentence, sometimes uh, it's a piece of prose. It doesn't matter. So I've got people coming. I've got uh, a gentleman from Australia. I've got a lady from um, Italy. Uh, so mm. I'm, it's very... And we're all different ages, and it's just fabulous. Yeah. I love it. And we just make it fun. We have a theme every week, but you don't have to stick to it. Like one mm. week, um, we had Wonky Donkey. So people mm. wrote about the Wonky Donkey. So it's everybody yeah. chooses a different theme. And it's just fun, and it's just lighthearted, and, and it just helps everybody's feeling of sense of well-being, I suppose. Mm. And I get so I much out of it as well. Yeah. I love it. And, and community as well, you know, all coming together yeah. with a common purpose. And, and yeah. that one's on Zoom as well, is it? So Yes, it is. So I can yeah. I can even put the Zoom link on that if you like. And yes. it's free to attend. And it's from That's three o'clock to four o'clock every Friday. Yeah, put it put it in the in the links on the you know in the comments afterwards. That'd be lovely. So uh, yeah. I'm sure people would like to check that out. Anyone that's into writing and you know things like that, it'd be lovely for them to be able to get involved as well. Yeah, you know, it's an international writing group, no less. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm I'm hoping that you might consider putting your poem or allowing me to put your poem rather into my book as well when that comes about. Oh, so, um, that'd be lovely. Um, still, still very excited about that. It's it's gradually building each week, you know, more poems going in. So uh, That's brilliant. And, um, and I, I just feel so honoured that, you know, all the poets that have worked with me so far and, and done the show with me have all been really happy you know and um keen for me to have their work in the book which is is brilliant you know because it's it's lovely to be able to help promote other people as well you know yeah so, yeah um, and i think your your drawings as well ignite something in us as as poets and writers i definitely well, think that i think sometimes yeah. you just need that like that's what i saw and everybody else would see something different but in your painting mm -hmm. That's what I saw. I thought, oh, why aren't we just looking after the planet? Why are we looking after the trees? Don't get me on my soapbox again. But you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what it ignited in me. Yes. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. and I've had some amazing poems written about my paintings now that, you know, are just something, you know, they've come up with some ideas and things that just wouldn't have occurred to me, which is great, yeah. you know, because as you say, everybody sees things in a slightly different way and gets something different from it. And and it's amazing to to actually see that and, and to mm. compare, you know, my poem with theirs. And, you know, in, in due course, we may even have more than one other guest poem as well for a painting as well so you know there may be three poems to compare for a painting i don't know yet it's it's yeah. still it's still building you know and, and mm -hmm. still coming together for this book so um i'm just really excited about it and i don't blame you so uh, and and a, planning to have a, a short bio about each poet as well so that people can know a little bit about you um follow you know have links in there as well so that people can get in touch if they need to or whatever or would like to you know as much as um each guest poet would like to put in really so you know because i think otherwise you just have the poems it, and i think it's just nice to have a little bit of information about that poet as well to go with it it is, it is yeah so um, yeah so that's my plan anyway but i think i've got 22 of my poems now ready to go wow. in but uh, really so getting there but I think a few more yet and uh i don't want to make it like the complete works of shakespeare but i want to have <laughs> enough content you know so um so that's been good fun but uh Absolutely. yeah so so what's uh next on the agenda apart from your um your weekly writing group are you are you doing any more shows like the the one that you did and you know to 300 people and more or well, I'm hoping so. Person? Yeah, I'm hoping so. Now the world is opening up. Mm. Um, I'm part of uh, the Staffordshire. Uh, Mel is the Poet Laureate. And when she got inaugurated, or I don't know what that word is that you probably use when you become a Poet Laureate. I went down mm. to Stafford to see her. This was a couple of years ago, obviously, before all this, the world went different. 
Um, and so I've, I've joined quite a lot of her online things, which is brilliant. We've been talking about drought and um, what else have been on? And then we've been talking about drought and flooding. So we've, we've done writing on both of those, which has been really good as well. That's been brilliant. Mm. Mm, so I joined in other things. things. I love it. But mm. yeah, yeah. No, it's um it just seems to be from one extreme to the other from last week to this week, you know, heat wave yeah. and now some, you know, some poor people have had flooding and goodness knows what again. So just yeah, it's getting more extreme, isn't it? Which just takes us back to climate change again, doesn't it? And what we yeah, can do to help, help yeah. stop it. And this, like you were saying it? about the trees, if we had more trees, we wouldn't have the floods. And so mm. it goes on. <laughs> yeah. And and also, I, I don't know, but the strong winds, because we've been having much stronger winds than we used to get, I think. And, you know, would Definitely. more trees help with that? Because they would act as, as wind breaks. And yeah. I, don't, I don't know whether that would be enough of a difference. But certainly with the, the flooding, they would help as well. And, you know, and the, there have been hillsides that have been devastated because there's been nothing there to, you know, stop the, the the water just going down so fast and taking the soil with it um, that's why i don't understand why people want to cut down trees i i really can't get my head around mm. that I, I really can't no we need them we need them you know and, and we need them even more i think now if you think about if we're trying to cut down on plastics there's a lot of things that used to be made of wood became made of plastic but wood does a perfectly good job and so we'll need more trees if we're going yeah. to you know, not keep using plastic all the time. So, yeah, lots of good reasons to keep trees, apart from they make you feel good. Yes. Yeah. And they provide shade for us in the hot sun, for animals. They provide homes for so many creatures that are at risk if they don't have enough of the right yeah. you know, species of trees as well. We're in danger of losing some of our wildlife in this country as well. You know, it's not just um, the rhinos, which... Yeah, because it was the last two were females, weren't there? Weren't there? Yeah. That was yeah. it. So, but yes, you know the some some particular animals like only one or two types of trees to live on. So, yeah, it's, I think, it's very scary. I think the image that'll haunt me is that one of the orangutan when uh, they they came in and they they cut down all the trees and this orangutan climbed up the crane of you know what the men were pulling down it was just stood there it was just hanging on with its hand out and it was like oh my. Yeah. i mean i get get emotional thinking about that now it's like what have you done where's my home where's do you know what i mean yeah. and he's um, probably been been brought up on that tree from being a baby yeah and it's got nothing left it's just yeah. decimation all around I, I think how can you do that no, I, mean. I know, I know, and and the you know palm oil is another one. You know, no, trying to use yeah. products that don't have the palm oil in, or at least sustainably sourced palm oil. But and it and you don't realise how many things it's in until you start looking. You know, no. it's included in so many things: foods, cosmetics, toiletries. You yeah. know, just so much, and you know, which is no wonder that they keep trying to. You know, you know plow up the rainforest to grow more but if if we stop using it then there won't be that incentive for them to destroy rainforests as much so i mean like yeah. for example peanut butter which is renowned for palm oil you can actually get buy peanut butter that hasn't got palm oil in mm. but the trouble is it's more expensive so mm. you might pay two pound 80 for a jar with with palm oil and then you'll pay three pound three pound fifty maybe for a, for a jar without it and it's like no that's not encouraging people to buy it mm, it's not you know I mean? it's not no and it, it may cost more right. to, to produce it but you know i think yeah maybe maybe somehow that could be subsidized mm, i don't know I so. that's an idea but um mm. yeah oh dear well i think we need to end on a positive note that We'll all try and do everything we can to to stop using plastic and palm oil and everything else, and yeah, do what we can to as you say plant more trees, give trees, you know, like you had for Christmas, you know, a, a gift of a tree, even if it's not in your garden, you know, but it's being planted somewhere, yeah, um, and a plaque to to show that, you know, I think that's a, a fantastic idea. So if we can encourage more people to do that as well, that'd be great. Absolutely. 
yeah maybe um do, do you know who that was done through you could even put the link on that in the comments as well if you like well yeah I could, I could ask i could ask my stepdaughter where she got it from yeah, yeah. Um, that would be really really good yeah yeah be great oh, i'm so excited i can't tell you it was yeah. like the best <laughs> best thing ever yes oh that's amazing but well, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on the show, Yvonne. I've yes, really enjoyed you. it. Um, and as you say, if we can have helped to maybe spur one person on, two people on or whatever to to just try and, you know, do something different to help the planet, that would be fantastic. I agree. Uh, I hope people have enjoyed the poems as well and and um, enjoyed our chat. I know I really have, and I hope that you have as well, Yvonne. I have. It's, it's really gone too quick. It's gone I know. Too quick. I know it's, it's like, hang on, we were only just starting. And where's it yeah. gone? So, um, but I hope that you'll come back again. Um, Definitely. Definitely. really will. enjoyed it. I'd, I'd love to hear more poems about my paintings from you, because if that yes, was anything to go by, brilliant. And you. if you can let me have a copy, I'll... I'd love to post it with my painting for people to be able to read it that in their own time as well. That'd be lovely if that's okay. Definitely, um, yeah, thank you. So uh, very much look forward to coming back on the show again. So anyway, next week, of course, I'll be back with another fabulous poet coming to join me for some more poetry and painting. And um, that's uh, next Wednesday at seven o'clock UK time again here on Facebook. And if anyone wants to sign up for my newsletter, to my VIP mailing list, to see new paintings and get invitations to events and things, that's at www.fionahooper.com. So thanks everybody for watching. It's been lovely to have you along. Stay safe, have a good week, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next week on Wednesday for another Poetry of Painting session. So it's bye for now from Yvonne and myself. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.